Thank you, Father, for my life, for the rest of my life. The Bible says, all gifted to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. So no matter what happens, Jesus is our King, and he will never fail. God of us, I appreciate you, Lord. to welcome you to today's uh, family devotional. Sorry the network is uh, misbehaving here. So please remember to share um, Sorry the network is uh, not stable. So we give glory to God for his mercies and uh, we thank God for a newborn day. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Daddy, we bless you. We adore you. We honor your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for a good night's sleep. Thank you for the cool weather. Thank you, Lord, for the journeys of our lives. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our nation. Thank you, Lord, for all the countries of the world and the planet itself and all our contexts. Thank you for the heavenly places you dwell in there, and the world is as true for your foot. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your goodness and mercies. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. We, I mean, for the saving of our souls. Thank you for your presence in our lives all the time. Thank you, Lord, for being faithful all the time. Accept our thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. King of kings, Lord of lords, we thank you for your word that you are sharing with us every day. Thank you for your church. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Lord, for the sunshine, the moonlight. Thank you for the stars. Thank you for the wind. Thank you for the oceans. Thank you for the valleys. Thank you for the mountain tops. Thank you for the plants and animals. We appreciate you for everything you made, you made in abundance. Accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Mighty Father, even as we go to your word this morning, we invite you into our lives again, please. Whatever sins are still left that could blockade our uh, prayers from being answered, please forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will also forgive those who sin against us. Please, Lord, let them be forgiven. We also pray that those who we, we sinned against Forgive us, forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. This morning, we are going to take our Bible passage from the book of 2 Corinthians, 
Corinthians chapter 16. We are still in the series of Corinthians, so chapter 16. Uh, is it first or Corinthians the second? First, first Corinthians, first Corinthians 16. 16. We are starting five from to 5 to 20. 20. 20. So let's listen attentively, please. God bless you. Remember to share this message. Okay, ma. Now I will come to you when I pass through Macedonia. And it may be that I will remain or even spend the winter with you, that you may send me on my journey wherever I go. For I do not wish to see you now on the way, but I hope to stay a while with you, if the Lord permits. But I will carry a, a person until Pentecost. For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. And if Timothy comes, See that he may be with you without fear, for he does the work of the Lord as I also do. Therefore, let no one despise him, but send him on his journey in peace, that he may come to me, for I am waiting for him with the brethren. Now concerning our brother Apollos, I strongly <laughs> urge him to come to you with the brethren, but he was quite unwilling to come at this time. However, he will come when he has a convenient time. Watch, stand fast in faith, be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. I urge you, brethren, you know the household of Stephanas, that it is the first fruit of Achaia, and that they have devoted themselves to the ministry of the saints, that you also submit to such and to everyone who works and labor with us. I am glad about the coming of Stephanas, Fortunatus, and Achaeus, for what was lacking on your part they supplied. For they refreshed my spirit and yours, therefore acknowledge such men. The churches of Asia greet you, Aquila and Priscilla greet you heartily in the Lord with the church that is in their house. All the brethren greet you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Praise the living Jesus. We Hallelujah. thank God for that uh, enlightening uh, passage. Um, this morning we are going to look at, again, we treated it before, but we are going to look at the family, the family setup. Um, particularly the Christian family, the Christian family. Previously, I did um, explain that you have different sets of families. I mean, the entire human being, we are one family. Uh, we belong to the human family. Then you have the animals family. You have the plants family, then you have, you know, the aquatic family. I mean, many things can qualify as family. And even in the outer world, you have the um, industrial family. Those in the textile industry, they are in the same family. Those who are in uh, the aviation, they are in the same family. Those who are in, uh, you know, just like that. You have uh, so many family, professional families, uh, social families like the clubs, uh, the Rotarian, Rotarian family, the Goji club of all this world, and so on and so forth. And then the working family, industrial union, that, uh, and then uh, the senior staff associations, they are belong to their own uh, uh, families. So family family would exactly mean what you want it to mean. But today we are looking at um, the Christian family. Uh, we all know that Paul didn't get married, or if he did, we didn't have that story. And um, every other one may get married, but Paul didn't. Yet he belongs to 
a family. One, he belongs the professionally to a lawyer's family. Then he belongs, again, uh, by way of talent, to tent makers' families. So uh, you can now see. Now, above all, he belongs to the Christian family, the Christian family now. And I looked at all the families that I've tried to mention and even those not mentioned. I see that they are segregational. Yes, they are segregational. But the one that has a larger population, as we, are, as we speak, and that cuts across all tribes, all races, all whatever, is the Christian family. You know that in the religious family too, you have uh, the Christians, the atheists, the Muslims, the Buddhists of this world. But when we say a Christian family, what binds us together is Jesus Christ. Anyone who obeys John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten uh, son to us to die in so that we will not perish but have everlasting life. That's the main purpose of being in Christ. And whosoever believes in him, so anybody who believes in Christ belongs to the Christian or to the Christ family. So, and um, what are we supposed to be doing in the Christian family? We're supposed to care for one another, you know, we, in, when we do everything in common. We do everything in common. The Christian family is, should be a replica of our uh, um, biological families. And it should be a replica because in the biological family, father, mother, children, you know, there is a bond of love. Everybody cares for one another as much as is humanly possible. The same thing we are supposed to be and do in the Christian fold. And uh, thank God, like I said, within the Christian family, there is no barrier, no language barrier, no racial barrier, no color barrier. Everything is one. So we are supposed to deal with ourselves without discrimination. We are supposed to be, you know, in one love, in one accord. And if you look at the church of the old, you know, in fact, if you look at it, there used to be uh, a family church. So it's not even a bad thing to be. You have a family church patterned after the Aquilas and uh, what's the name of the Priscilla? Priscilla. Uh -huh. You know, every family is the church. So if the Bible says we are two or three are gathered in my name, so will I be. Whatever they ask for, I will give to them and so on and so forth. So you know that it is one, one, one people bound in love, then there's nothing wrong with that. And then <clears throat> you can also have your, the larger Christian family that many of us coming from different places to come together together in one place. They call that the assembly of the saints, which is uh, what we call, we call the church today or the gathering together of Christians. So there is nothing wrong, but like I said, we must be different from other families. You know, we must be different from other, not like industry, not like even uh, some, even we should even, our love should transcend that of the nucleus or extended family. We should see one another as one. And not only that, we should do unto ourselves what Christ expects us to do to ourselves and what is that thing justice we should care for one another the church either as a gathering or as you know you remember the bible also says we are the temple of god each of us is a church and so we are the temple god dwells in us so when we gather together we are coming in with the spirit of the lord so that you know we will uh, 
uh, be able to do his will. The essence of Christian family is to do the will of him that sent them. I mean, and the overall goal is that we start uh, rehearsing what will be in the end from this world because when we leave this world, we're supposed to reign with Christ, be joined here with him, and then right here, we ought to start rehearsing, practicing that which we are going to meet and be doing till eternity. And may we all qualify to be there in the mighty name of Jesus. That is why among Christians, Bible says, it should not be heard among you that you are doing certain evil things, even all evil things, so to speak. I mean, you can't be talking of sexual immorality, you can't be talking of lying, you can't be talking of betraying one another. Galatians chapter 5 from verse uh, 19, you know, uh, uh, fruit, you, you should not be demonstrating the fruit of the flesh, you know, which is anger, envy, you know, um, uh, you know, sort of all, all sorts of evil. Instead, 19 to 21 should be our portion. It's Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 21, which talks about uh, love, kindness, you know, against which there is no law. Christians ought not to be breaking the laws of the land. No, we are, that's why we are not of the world, because people of the world break the laws of the land and the laws do catch up with them. You know, the law does not spare, the law kills, the law kills but the letter or the spirit gives life. So we are not supposed to be part and parcel of those who are uh, breaking the laws, you know, not paying your tithe, tax, not tithe, not paying your tax to the authorities, you know, maltreating your wife, maltreating your children, not respecting elders and uh, not caring for one another you know, keeping my list on forgiveness and all those that should not be found in the dictionary of uh, of Christians. So, and these are the tenets that we uh, sign to, uh, to uphold, that is to do what is Christ-like. We preach and teach the word of God. We encourage one another. When one is in trouble, we rally around. Even when we gather together as a a gathering of saints, the church that we talk about, we are supposed to care more, do more welfare to one another. You have so much, you dump part of it. I have so little, I drop part of it. And we gather it together and then it is redistributed, you know, according to Second Corinthians 8, 1 to the end. I've always said that that is the primary role of the church is to redistribute the wealth you know, amongst its members. That's not easily done outside. Though people copy that from outside in form of this cooperative thing so that they gather money together to help one another. It is your turn, it is my turn, everybody. That's purely business. But this one is welfare. Welfare is particularly not what you give back. You just kind of get help from people without necessarily the burden of paying back or the next burden of paying interest on such helps. So uh, the Christian family ought to pray together, you know, because the focus, their focus is God, is on God, and their focus is to make heaven. So they are heaven conscious. And the Christian family tries to do everything. The author of Joshua 1, 8 to 10 tells us, tries to do everything that the Bible asks us to do. And particularly, Christ asks us to do. Observing Holy Communion, I did say the other time that look, a family can sit together if the family is good enough, you know, conscious of God enough, and have, you know, a uh, corporate relationship with God. That family can even observe uh, Holy Communion. It may sound strange, but this is the extent of understanding that we need to have that. Is not restricted to when you all have a large gathering or something like that. The what the watch word is your relationship with God. If your relationship with God is uh, cordial, you know, uh, only communion in particular is to bring you closer to God, remind you constantly. Because the more you want to observe the holy communion, the 
for you are conscious of not committing sins. And then husbands in Christian family ought to, you know, love their wives. Uh, you know, to the point that they can do everything possible to protect their wives, including laying down their lives. And also, wives should submit to their husbands, you know, and then wives, that is uh, Provisions chapter 5 from 23, 22 upwards. So we need to understand that, you know, we are called to into a service, a service to one another, in the Christian fold, not like every other outside uh, bodies. So, not only that, a Christian is not expected to be lazy. That is uh, the book of, um, we're not expected to be lazy. Proverbs 31, 11 to 31, particularly a Christian uh, uh, female or mother or woman is supposed